congratulations on a successful featherweight debut. Curious how you felt out there after rehydrating and, and fighting out this weight for the first time. Thank you. Uh, man, I felt great physically, mentally, um, just different energy levels. <sighs> Cutting, I guess, 25, 30 is a lot better than 35, 40. <laughs> It's a big difference, you know, so I'm, I was happy about that. Um, it was a little weird, though, because this was, like, the most nerves I think I've ever had for any single fight in my entire career, probably even more than my debut. It just felt very nerve-wracking, not knowing what was going to happen, going up a weight class, a tough, tough dude who's been in there with some of the best guys in the world, beat some of the best guys in the world at featherweight. Um, and I know he wanted it. Like, nobody wants to lose three in a row. So I, I knew he wasn't coming here to just take part, and especially at the face-offs where he told me, you already know. I was like, all right, we're getting gangster right now. So I kind of knew what type of energy he was going to bring, and um, I'm just happy he was able to get the, get the win tonight. You know, you, you speak about the nerves there. Obviously, people have talked about you going to featherweight for a long time, and you were always a little bit cautious about it, saying, well, I don't know, those are bigger guys. So I understand why you'd be nervous. But now that you've gone out there, got a win over a guy, a very dominant win, in fact, does that give you the confidence moving forward that actually, no, I can complete, compete with the guys in this division? Yeah, 100%. I mean, I jumped in there with some of the biggest guys I could find at 145 at Extreme Couture, some of the guys over at Seneca MMA. Um, some of the guys back home from Long Island, just getting in there with the who's who's and just trying to get my feet wet, get comfortable as possible. And I think tonight kind of shows us what I could do. Um, I didn't feel small. I thought I was. I stayed across the octagon. And I was like, man, is it too late for me to go back? Because this motherfucker is big. But thankfully, um, I was able to uh, show what I could do here. Do you know you landed a power bomb? I went for the pile driver. It's one of my patented moves that I teach back home in Long Island. So, guys, the technique works. It definitely works on the biggest stage. So, uh, guys, take notes. Last one from me. What do you want your path in this division to be, right? You're a former champion. You've moved up in weight. We've seen those in the past sometimes get shot straight into a title shot. Or do you want to maybe, like, okay, let's battle the nerves, fight, fight a couple of guys first, or how do you want to proceed? Well, if you look at my resume, man, I've only fought three guys in my entire UFC career that were not ranked. Everybody else, you know, to, to have the amount of wins I've had in the Bantamweight division over so many ranked opponents. You know, a lot of guys pad their records. They fight these guys unranked and whatever. Um, they get a little bit fast-tracked. I've never been shy about taking the hard, beaten, unbeaten path, I should say. Um, you know, give me the next best guy. And hopefully that removes all doubt. At the end of the day, for me, I want my title shots earned, not given. Some of these other guys, they like handouts. I like to prove that I'm the best. Um, and, you know, you, you hear me. I always talk about, oh, it's a business from the fans. Some of the fans, they, they it's a business you got to do. Make the, Yeah, of course we want money. But at the same time, I came in this for sport. If we're going to have rankings, I want to go by the rankings. And I want to beat the next guy in front of me and show that I belong and I've earned my shot. I'll do it right here. Uh, after you came back from your injury, you were already one of the more active UFC champions when you were at 135. So how active can you be not now that you don't have to cut that extra 10 pounds? When back in college and high school, I would make weight week after week. College, I was cutting 20 pounds. Um, I mean, I could honestly do it as often as I want. Will I want to do that? No, it just got to make sense. I'm not just going to just take fights just to take fights unless there's a fight that makes sense for me that's going to help me get towards my goal. And if I stumble, then yeah, okay, we just start taking fights that we need to take fights, right? Because at the end of the day, it's all about what have you done for me lately. Like, I understand this game. I understand this sport. Right now, we have a path. We have a goal. Um, this performance, I got a little down on myself because I was like, you know, if I want to beat a guy like Ilya, I need to be able to finish a guy like Cater as well prepared as he was to defend some of the stuff on the ground. Um, you know, I was a little bit sad about it, you know, because I was like, man, if I can't do certain things to him, then how the hell am I going to do that to a guy like that, you know, if I want to challenge for a world title again? Um, so that's the way I kind of look at things, and hopefully we have some good things later on. And obviously there's been a lot of, uh, like, top five featherweights fighting lately. Mavzar, Brian, Yair, Ilya. Now that you are past Cater, what, what do you think do you see as the path to the title shot? Give me the next best guy. I mean, Holloway's fighting at 55 tonight, right? If he wins, he ain't coming back down. I, I just, it wouldn't make any sense for him. So then that'll put Brian Ortega as number one. Give me the next best guy. I'll take Brian Ortega, respectfully. This guy, I, I, never, I got to train with him one time. Same management. Um, 
you know, it's not, no, obviously, you know, bad blood or anything like that. It's just we're both trying to chase the same thing. It's not like he's my main training partner like Marab was. It's a completely different situation. Um, I beat a guy like him. I think I'm undeniable. What did you make of his last performance against Yair? I thought Brian looked like a dog. He got hurt, showed that he can turn the fight back quickly in his favors, and that's what he was able to do. He's gritty. He's not going to go away easy. He's got that Mexicano, that La Raza. You know, he's got that in his blood, and uh, it showed. Aljamain, right here in front. Um, the UFC just announced new, new gloves. I'm wondering if you've had a chance to check them out or if you've looked into them at all. Uh, if they're the ones that I've tried on before at the PI, I've tried it on. Um, I don't really know what to think about it. It was like a slight little bend. Uh, hopefully it does what it's supposed to do, and the only time it's going to be able to tell. Thank you. Congrats on the win, my man. Thank you. Uh, Calvin had like a, I don't know if it was an 82 or 92% takedown defense, and then he ran into you. Yeah, I see the smile. That's my answer. What's up? <laughs> Listen, man, like people give up. Uh, my last fight... Just mentally, I just was not there, and it kills me because it comes off as, oh, he's still complaining, he's salty. It's like, no, I'm just telling you what it is. Don't ask. If you don't want the God honest truth, not you. Um, so I think I got to show, like, even if a guy has really good takedown defense with good timing, good setup, good preparation, I could take any one of these guys down. You know, I train with some of the best guys in the world, and uh, we do a lot of good homework. And I knew Calvin was going to be hard to take down. He made it a little bit difficult in the beginning of that first round. But then once I got going, got my feet wet, I was like, okay, this is just like the training room. And um, got to change that uh, fight stat real quick. Yes, sir. What were the, the talks like in, in between rounds two and three? Because were you pleased or, or shocked at all? Like, man, I'm able to put in work and I'm, I'm putting this dude on the ground because I want to. Yeah, I was definitely pleased with that. But then I was also a little annoyed because the, the fans were booing. And I wasn't annoyed that they were booing. It's, I was annoyed that I couldn't advance the position because it was either I lose the position trying to chase a finish or I just sit in the position and it's kind of a stalemate because he's not doing anything either. So it's just one of those type of things. It was a really tough situation. Damn, someone's getting a finish? Damn. Olives. Can you see it? Charles got a finish? Oh, no, he's, he's, he's working it. Really bad spot right Damn. He's, pu he's pulling off arm and shorts. <laughs> Dude, Bronx is crazy. And last um, for me, with, with 45 being so good to you, you look rehydrated, you look happy, you were smiling a lot. Is this the, this the right amount of uh, time preparation to just say, this is my new home, we could just expect you to do work at 45, or Rob stays at 35, and you guys try, try to take over? Yeah, I have no desire to go back down to 135 pounds, ever. You couldn't pay me enough money to do that to my body again. I was destroying muscle. It's just never going to happen again. I'm at 145. Shit, you might even see me at 155 before it's all said and done. That's what's up, man. Congrats on the win, and that change looks dope. Thank you. Appreciate it. Aljo, Aljo, you were head and shoulders of uh, the best grappler at bantamweight. Uh, we got Brian Ortega, uh, Mosvar Ivloev. I think I said it right. Uh, in featherweight, you consider yourself the best grappler in featherweight? Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I mean, I'm, I'm in the mix. I'm in the mix. I, you know, Mozart, he grapples in a unique way. Then you got Diego Lopez, he grapples in a unique way. And then you got Brian Ortega, his grappling's in a unique way. I think everyone's a little bit different. I think I blend the wrestling a little bit better than most of them um, with the jujitsu, and I think that's the difference. And you, who knows, you might see a couple more power drivers in the future. And we obviously know the Weekly Scraps podcast on YouTube, Killing the Game. Uh, put on your analyst hat. What are your thoughts for the BMF title and the main event? BMF title. We did a breakdown on this for my podcast. Uh, this was a tough one. You got the volume of Max Holloway, and then you got the durability of Max Holloway. But also, Gaethje is durable as well, and he's a little bit more dialed in. He's not as reckless. I, could, I think you're going to see a lot of those calf kicks coming back from him. I think if Max mixes in the kicks, it makes things very interesting. I would imagine that Gaethje hits harder. Um, so with that said, it's hard for me to pick. I, I like I fuck with both of these guys. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to pick a, a side. Um, may the best man win. But for the main event, I'm I'm going with uh, Jamal Hill. That's my guy. Of course, Pereira's a beast. His stud came into the UFC short short time and has done a lot already in his career. Um, but I'm leaning towards Jamal Hill.
Al Jermaine up here. You mentioned you were in the best mindset for your last fight, and tonight you mentioned some frustration about some things you weren't able to do. What do you need to do to get back to that mindset where you feel like you're at your best, both mentally and physically, when you go out there? I, I mean, I felt good in there tonight. It, it's just some of the positions that were stalled out a bit. That was the frustration more so than, like, not ha – I, I, I don't know. It's just tough because – Again, I'm chasing the gold. I'm not just here to just win. Yeah. Winning is cool, but if I'm just here to take part, it, it doesn't really make a lot of sense for me at this point in my, my life, my age. Um, I'm, I'm trying to get that UFC gold once again, and I got to be able to do a little bit more. And I, that's really just the mindset that I have. When you think like that, good things happen. Um, of course, I'm going to definitely enjoy the win with my friends, my family, my fiance. Uh, but with that said, the last fight, like I said, wasn't, the best version of myself it was watered down. This one was much better. And uh, I think we got to show a very dominant performance from beginning to end. Yeah, I could have done a little few things a little bit better, maybe. I, I got to go back and watch it. Otherwise, I might just be extra critical for no reason. Al oh. back here. You mentioned that you were a little disappointed with not being able to get a finish, but Oh, sorry. I'm back here. I don't know if you can see me. Um, you mentioned you were a little disappointed not being able to get a finish. Obviously, still a dominant performance. Do you think that maybe you just need to settle into the weight class a little bit, or do you attribute that to Calvin Cater's toughness? I think it, it's a little bit of both. I mean, Calvin's a veteran. He's been around the block. He's got his own promotion, killing the game. I've trained with him as an amateur, so I know he's really good. Um, back in 2010, so come, everything came full circle, which was fascinating to see them stand across the octagon and in the back room like I said that was the most nerves I've ever had in a very very long time that I can remember there was points where I'm just like is it too late for me to go home is, is the bus still outside for me to just go back to my house uh, but once the fight got going I was very excited about it and uh, I felt like I settled in a lot more and I, I realized like yo man you definitely belonged here years ago and uh, I think the performance showed tonight. Awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Have a good night. We'll be at Marquee tonight. Let's go.